Show me the deals. All right, you guys, it is no surprise that the Phoenix market has gotten kind of soft over the last few months. And this time of year in particular, you can be a bit more negotiable as a seller sometimes. And as a buyer, you might have a better opportunity in negotiating that price you want. So today I'm going to show you where you can find the places with the most seller concessions, how we're looking in terms of price cuts, and hopefully give you some tools in your tool belt to go out there and negotiate what you want as a buyer. So let's get into it. There's generally two ways to get a discount on a home that you're buying. First of all, negotiate a lower price from the list price. Second of all, you can ask for a seller concession. And I'm gonna show you more about seller concessions and explain that in a minute, but let's look at price changes first. So this graph of price changes is really the amount of price cuts that we're seeing on a weekly basis. This low number here, I believe this is is either not completed data or this is from the holiday week. So I'm going to say that's an outlier at the moment, but you can see where this trend has been heading over the last few months. And in general, the amount of price cuts per week is about 2000 price cuts per week. Now I'm going to show you how many listings we have on the market as well and new listings coming to market weekly. So we'll get into that as comparison in a bit, but you can see about 2000 listings ish are getting price changes per week. And the median amount of price cut that we're seeing is about $10,000. So as a seller, if your house is listed, you're considering making a price change, this gives you an idea of what the median is of those price cuts that are out there to be competitive with other listings. And uh, as a buyer, you might be able to anticipate if a seller is due for a price cut, uh, they may be cutting by 10,000. Uh, so that's what we're looking at there with the uh, price changes per week. So seller concessions, the other way to get yourself a discount, um, the way that seller concessions works, if you're not familiar, basically the seller is giving the buyer some money to put towards their closing costs. And they can use that money to pay closing costs, which are you know lender fees, title fees, that kind of thing. Or they can use that money to put towards their interest rate and actually buy down the interest rate. Now, that can be a very expensive process these days uh, to buy down an interest rate to a level that makes a big difference. But depending on what kind of concession you get, how much you get, you may be able to apply that towards buying down the rate and uh, getting yourself a more affordable monthly payment. So of course, it's something to explore and discuss with your lender if you're getting a concession. But either way, you kind of get to decide what that concession is applied to. And it cannot be applied to your down payment. It can only be towards your or closing costs of some sort. So take that as you will, but we're seeing about 44% of uh, sales in the last month with a seller concession. And that median concession is about 9,500. So you can assume that if you are negotiating in a concession, um, getting around that price range, that's a, or that that concession range, that is about the median that we are seeing. Um, and this is not changed all that much over the last few months. It's actually come down from what we were seeing earlier this year. Uh, and then of course, you know, it was much lower when the market was hotter. Sellers weren't giving as many concessions. So where can you find these concessions? Well, the Cromford Report has this really awesome chart here uh, that shows all of the concessions that are taking place in the various cities. You can see here some of these cities getting the most concessions, Levine being one, 58 closings within that last month and 79% of those were seller concessions with the median of about $10,000. This goes through every city here and you can see this median concession is around that $10,000 range um, and we're seeing everywhere from you know 60% and above so far. It's not surprising to see which cities do not give as many seller concessions. So we've got like Sun City West and Sun Lakes. Both of those are 55 plus retirement communities. You're not seeing that as much. Paradise Valley and Scottsdale, more of our luxury markets. So you won't be seeing that as much there. So all of that makes sense. Cave Creek, um, Fountain Hills, just fewer concessions being paid 
in those cities. Now let's look by price range as well because this is interesting data to check out. You can see that the highest uh, percentage of concessions going out is in that price range between 300 to 400,000, which is pretty typical. You tend to see buyers asking for concessions when they are buying in that lower price range and uh, possibly um, needing some additional help to be able to qualify for the loan to get their, their closing costs covered. So that's not surprising to see. Um, and then it kind of tears off here, the 400 to 500, uh, 600 to 800 price range, or five to 600, six to eight. Um, you know, we're seeing 54%, 43%, 36%. Um, and then on the other side too, um, you know, a lot of cash buyers in this area of the these lower price ranges. So um, not seeing as many concessions on that side. And it really just peaks in that three to $400,000 range. So if you are a seller right now in that three to $400,000 range, just know that about 57% of those closings lately have had a seller concession of about $9,000. So you can kind of budget that into your net. Know that if you do get an offer and they're asking for that, that's kind of par for the course at the moment. It doesn't mean you have to accept it. doesn't mean you can't negotiate it, but it is something that uh, seems to be very common in that price range right now. Now, many of you have commented in the past, how can we incorporate these concessions into uh, these sales prices? Because when people are asking for concessions so consistently and they are large sums of money, that in effect should adjust the sales price by $10,000 downward if that's the median, right? So the Cromford Report actually looks at this as well. They have the median closing price versus median closing price adjusted for concessions laid out here, which is so nice to see. They have 440 as the median closed price and then adjusted for concessions, that's at 436 496. So as we talk about the median sales price throughout the Phoenix metro area, you can see there is a slight adjustment just based on the fact that we're seeing about half of sales giving some sort of concession. Now, I know this is a lot of information and I didn't spell out every single city out there. So if you are looking for what the median concession is in a particular city, check the description below and you can request that information. Just let us know what city and we'll get that to you. Now, all of this information is important, but let's also check out what's going on in the Phoenix market as a whole, as far as new listings, days on market and that kind of thing. Before I get there, if this is at all valuable for you, make sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing. So new listings, year to date, we're at about 78,000. And what does that mean? Well, it helps when you reference previous years. So last year around this time, we were at about 104,000. And uh, in 2021, we had about 107,000. So the amount of new listings on the market is not anything crazy. Although we are seeing more new listings coming to the market as things have slowed down and buyers haven't really been absorbing as many listings because of low demand, we see still aren't seeing any major increase in the amount of new listings. Now, when we look at active listings, you can see the trend here in the pink line. This has been increasing and this is mainly because our demand has gone down. So even though we're getting the same number of new listings every week, those buyers are not putting them under contract and taking them off the market. So um, we're actually starting to see a very, very slight downward trend right now with active listings around 14,000. The Cromford Report says, if we continue this way, we'll probably end the year with the same number of listings as we started the year or, you know, close around that range, um, which is interesting because everything, all the new listings went down pretty quickly as we uh, started to pick up pace at the beginning of this year. Uh, and then we've climbed back up. So we'll see how we end up at the end of the year. And finally, another metric to consider is the days on market. Now, what I like about this chart is this is the median agent days on market at contract. So this is not the entire time a home gets listed until it closes. It's the time in which a home is listed before it gets a contract and goes under contract uh, because that contract period can be 30 days, 60 days, whatnot. And that information doesn't really help us understand how quickly a buyer came along to write a contract on that house. So this measure I think is most accurate and today we're sitting at about 33 days on market. This is for the Phoenix metro area as a whole. It's climbed up and that 
make sense as we've seen our demand go down and as we've approached a slower time of year. Sales rates have been pretty slow lately because of the low demand, the high interest rates, and people just kind of holding on to their homes because they don't have anywhere else to go that makes sense for them or is more affordable for them. But there are some predictions that next year the market is going to be thawing out. So if you want to learn more about that, make sure to check out this video right here and I'll be back on Tuesday with another market update.